Okay guys, I am finally moving Isla into this tank. Now it hasn't actually been very long since I filmed the last video, I just can't bear to see Isla in the tub anymore. A lot of people have been asking me where Isla has been all this time. She has this massive tub that she's been in with a load of artificial plants and her bromeliad from her old tank. Um, and although it's totally fine and it's nice and humid, I just think, you know, why keep her in there when I can put her in here? I know it's very bright. <laughs> Go up on there. Oh. I think she's not letting go of my hands. So I'm not sure what she's doing at the moment, just taking it all in, I think. She stands out quite a bit because she's not fired up. I found that when she's been in that tub, she just hasn't fired up one bit. And she also hasn't moved that much. Like, the difference between an actual terrarium and live plants compared to a plastic tub is completely different. One thing I will say, and this is besides the point, but I'm just, like, saying it because Isla's not doing anything at the moment, is when I first looked up stuff about crested geckos and I saw about handling them and how they were as pets, don't be put off by all the people who have a massive reptile collection and have crested geckos but they keep them in little tubs. I literally saw a video where they had this massive reptile room, all the reptiles had these amazing vivariums and then they went into the back room, got out a plastic tub which was completely opaque so no light was going in it at all and the crested geckos understandably were freaking out when they get handled because clearly they're a second thought in this owner's mind. And there's a massive difference between the people who regularly handle their geckos and provide them with a nice uh, setup, and then the people who get them aren't very interested in them, want a bigger reptile, and just put them to the back of the mines and put them in a tub because completely different behaviours. I mean, I say she wasn't moving in a tub, but no, she's not moving in here. But. Hopefully she'll set in, settle in. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna turn off the light, let her set her in, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, so it's the next day, and I decided that I'd leave Isla overnight, because it's quite late when I added her in. I thought I'd leave her overnight, see where she settles, because that'd be really interesting to actually see where she thinks is a nice, secure place. So, I couldn't see her. If you own a Cresta Gecko, you know in the morning after you've done a new tank, they're gonna be anywhere. And I did think that maybe she was going to be under that cork piece, you know, right in the background that you can't really see. But no. After a very long search, I found her under here. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see her. I might have to lighten this up. Right. <laughs> it is really difficult to see her. Hopefully, I'll put an arrow there when I'm editing this. But she is right under there. That's the last place I would have thought she would have even... There she is. You can see her eye. Last place I would have thought she would have decided to go but um yeah that's pretty cool also here you can see the water dish oh my goodness okay so after putting sealant and dirt on obviously the hole gets a lot smaller so i've had to squish that in for now but hopefully i can sort of sort that out i haven't put any food in yet but i'll probably try that tonight okay it's 20 past 12 at night if we look under here can you see isla she is right near that cork bit, that hiding space. She's above her water dish. But she, she may have found her new favourite hiding place. I kind of feel like we're looking into a jungle here. This is pretty cool. Also, one plant I forgot to mention that can run a risk when feeding is this ivy. So certain ivies aren't 100% safe in terrariums if you feed feed insects that you leave in a terrarium. Now, for me, if I'm going to feed my crested gecko, an insect I'm going to take it out of the tank to feed it because there's lots of places the insect could hide and then they could destroy the plants. They'll say as a cricket for example the cricket could eat this and this could as well be toxic to the gecko if it eats a cricket that's eaten this. So you've got to really look up about certain ivies whether or not they're safe for the particular pet you're using it for but for my crested geckos it doesn't run a risk because they don't actively eat leaves and none of their feed insects are in their tank.
So it's been three weeks since I originally planted this tank and I thought I'd give you guys an update on how the plants are doing. So plants that aren't doing particularly well is the ivy in the middle. The bottom leaves are kind of dying but then top leaves look like they're growing but mm, they're a little bit iffy. The plant in the corner, you know the one I said can't get too much water on it? Well it started to look limp so I was like okay I need to water it. When I watered it it just drained down so the plant really wasn't getting enough water and then one time I accidentally sprayed a bit of water on it, the leaf died. So I'm thinking it's probably better for the plant to remove the plant, put it in the house somewhere and actually replace it with the vanilla orchid. Now the vanilla orchid's doing perfectly fine, it's growing, it's got its aerial roots but it's really difficult to water, like when I need to give it a big water so I thought if I move it there that might be a bit easier for me but with the vanilla orchid you don't have to give it like too much of a water. What I usually do is water every few weeks because they produce aerial roots and these are actually made from the same tissue that makes the stems and the leaves and not the same tissue that actually make the original roots but what they do is they take in the water and minerals and nutrients and everything that need to benefit the plant. So the main roots don't need watering too much but if you spray the plant and it gets on the aerial roots that's very good because they can dry out quite quickly and this shows that this plant is grown in a place that's very wet or humid so this is why they use the aerial roots and in my other tank where I obviously have a bigger vanilla orchid plant the aerial roots are massive so that plant's doing really well in there but yeah I may move the vanilla orchid over here the main orchid is doing really well I forgot to say that this was actually planted in its own plant pot and it was planted with bark chips because you need to let air get to the roots the plants down the bottom are all doing really well. The polka dot plant, if you remember, was an offshoot from the original plant. Well, now they have their own little offshoots, so they're little tiny baby polka dot plants. It's so cute. And then we have the Fetonia over here, which I love. I love the colours in that. The ivy here, it's, you know, parts of it is doing really well, but then parts of it that I guess haven't seen the light so much just turned yellow or that might be another reason probably is another reason but I'm going to cut them off and put them back into the dirt because when I put in the cleanup crew they can break that down the bromeliads are doing really well although this one has something growing out of it if anyone knows what that is please let me know and the snake plant is doing really well as well the moss has lost its color a little bit I kind of expected this if anyone knows how to keep the moss green please let me know because it always always fades when I put it in but yes I'm gonna now add in the cleanup crew so the first member of our cleanup crew is the worm this particular one really hates bright light so as soon as I put it in it's gonna seek the darkest places so that leaves it less vulnerable to be eaten by my gecko although if they do eat it it's not the worst thing but a lot of people ask me about this um, whether they could just get them from their garden and I really really would say no because you really don't know what they've interacted with what they could be carrying and if your gecko eats that or if they spread something harmful to your entire tank you're gonna have a whole load of problems now people in the UK you can check swell reptiles out that's where I got these from they're relatively cheap and you get loads let's put these in now what I do is move them off so they can get right into the dark areas straight away with quite a few oh okay you having a little wiggle there i'm gonna add quite a few of these in i have had questions like how many wood lice do you add in how many worms do you add in i really don't know um i'm adding quite a few into here the worst thing though is i used to have newts and if you fed them a worm or you cut up a worm and they didn't eat the other half the smell of a dead worm is just so foul that i don't want to put too many in and then some die and then you just have that smell so I don't know, I'm just going to add in a few. Now what's really cool with the worms is if you've ever been interested in keeping one of those worm world things, I think by Insect Law, but I'm not 100% sure who it's by, I think a few places do it. You can get that for free in your tank because these worms will make all the little tunnels all along the bottom of your tank and in Lyra's tank where obviously I put the cleanup crew 
a little while ago. They've made tons and tons of tunnels and don't worry about this, this isn't destructive. They are actually making the soil a lot healthier. And you'll notice that there's a lot more tunnels in the damp regions and then where the succulent is, it just cuts off. They don't bother over there, but it's pretty cool to look at. Now in this tub, this is like my whole nature table, you can see my ants there. Um, in this tub is all my wood lice and I actually moved them from the original tub they were in because their population was growing so much. So I moved them into here. Let's see if we can see them. There's so many babies. Look at that. You can't really see, you're too far away. But yeah, there are tons and tons and tons of babies. And I'm gonna move a load in once again, not too many because, as I said, like they've grown so much in this that you don't want them to overpopulate um, your tank. So, well, I don't really count them out, but I'm going to put a fair few in. Here is a female woodlice with her egg pouch. See that yellow thing under there? That is full of baby woodlice. I've just quickly put her in one of these test tubes so I could show you that. But if we turn around, you see that? All full of babies. So to finish this tank off, I'm going to be putting in some custodian fuel by Arcadia. I use this for the wood lice when they're in the little tub and in the terrarium they're just little pellets that you push into the ground and my wood lice go crazy for it I tend to put it um, right into the ground or under the moss even if you just place it under the moss they seem to eat it and obviously you don't really see it it's completely safe for your gecko as well it's all natural products so you are meant to separate these about two and a half centimeters apart I tend to just sort of put a few in at a time see how it goes because we haven't got tons and tons in at the moment but I find the wood lice will favour darker damper areas especially around the wood so if I just put some around there and um, yeah that will be fine for them pop some back there I don't put springtails in here because they tend to just occur on their own so I never buy springtails they will just show up and oh some people asking me where I got the plants from and the size of my tank size of this tank is 45 by 45 by 60 high that's the minimum you want for an adult crested gecko and uh, the plants I get from all over the place but the ones that most of you can access is on eBay some people sell terrarium plants sometimes because they have their own terrariums and if you take say a cutting from something you can grow another one so they sell them on or there's internet reptile they are now selling plants that's in the UK, Josh's frogs is good for people in America, possibly Canada but I'm not 100% sure. So they're the best places to look. If you do buy from a shop make sure they're not sprayed with pesticides or anything that could harm your gecko and you will have to replace the soil they come in if they come from a shop that doesn't grow their plants for terrariums and reptiles and amphibians because the soil can contain some fertilizers that can be toxic. If you want me to do an update on my other tank, because a lot is changing in there, a lot is growing, and I'm going to be adding a couple new plants in there, let me know, I might do an update at some point. But yes, I hope you've enjoyed this video, it's been quite a long one. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching guys, and goodbye. <laughs>